Uh, well, Happy New Year. You and, too. Uh, uh, what do you get for Christmas? What kind of things do you get from the family for Christmas? Usual right? things, socks, underpants and that, and uh, I've got a couple of nice jumpers, actually. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. which... I'm really fussy with jumpers, you know, but being a little bit large. Yeah, you don't need careful. to make it look like it's no, a boiler. No, but really nice ones. So a little up. bit yeah. elastic, and they kind of hold you in a little bit. Yeah, yeah. You know. uh, pants as well. Did you, do you like getting pants? Do you like getting socks? Yeah, but they never, they never fit you. Mm. It's so, I like the, um, the Kelvin Kleins, you know, yeah. the, the oh, baggy yeah. ones with the cotton, you know, not too tight. Do you? Yeah, I do. I, do. <laughs> I like them, you know. God, we're stating on this conversation, no, aren't we? No, we don't. <laughs> we don't have an carriage, don't we? But do, then, who buys that for you? Is that your missus? Yeah, usually, you? yeah. Elaine does, uh, and then, you know, mother-in-law usually does as well. Yeah. Uh, uh, and do they both get the size right, or just someone... No, mother-in-law always gets the size wrong. Which size do you go for? I think it's, it's, I think it's punishment. <laughs> and you have to wear them, you know? Well, she goes too small or too large? Too small. <laughs> <laughs> Every time. But that's her being nice, probably. She's saying, I don't want to get XXL, I'll go medium. That's yeah, what well, she's doing. I, I, I used to think it was to make me feel better about, you know, being big, <laughs> but I don't think it is now. I think it's absolute torture. Yeah. But you know what? Well, you're not big. I mean, you're big, but you're not big. You're not. You know, you're not a big. You're not a big fatty. You know. No, I have to keep of... an eye on it. Yeah. I, I mean, every now and then I, I, I stop drinking. Like I done three months before Christmas. Wow, that's a good. And thing. then Christmas comes along, spoils it, and then you have to start again. You know. So that's why I don't make any New Year's resolutions really. You, you know... February, I'm going to start looking after myself again. You know, yeah. I've got a little girl now. She's eight, and I've got my other two. And well, so I'm getting you older. Got, no, because you, you had uh, Ellie is your youngest, yeah, so, my you? youngest baby. Okay. Yeah. Uh, are all three of them still at home with you, or the other two moved out? Well, no, the two of them is the oldest one and the little one. And Jamie's uh, living with her boyfriend. She's so. got her boyfriend. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So who, the oldest one? How old is she? Who's with you? She's 27. Yeah. Wow, 27. Yeah. Uh, and so, uh, and but you're all in the same house. She's not got a separate. No, she's got a separate part right. of it. Yeah. Because yeah. otherwise, because when mine's out, mine's 18, and when my oldest one. You out, can't have them in the same house. Oh, it drives you crazy. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's better. And like, I love sunny dinner times. Yeah, I've told you this before, but you know, sunny dinners. A big thing in our house, you yeah, know, and yeah. all the girls coming. I've got no chance yeah. whatsoever. But uh, and also, if they're coming late at night, you know, you've got to leave the latch off, and you hear them coming in at four or five. No, or you get the phone call. Yeah, Dad, I need to get a cab from Epping. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you know, it's one o'clock in the morning. Who are you talking about? I want to kill them. You know, yeah. But, yeah. yeah, we're sleeping. Uh, do you um, do you party with your kids? Uh, the older two, if they're going out, do you go out with them, or do you keep that part of your life separate from theirs? Oh, it's it's I, 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 like New Year's Eve. We was out. Jamie was away on holiday, but um, Lois was out with us, and the little one was out with us. Yeah. We went out with a lot of mates and family, and uh, to a great restaurant down in Chipping Onga, you know, <laughs> called Smith's. It was blinding. We yeah. had a really good night there. That was all family and friends and that, you know. But um, I remember once going to take in my two girls out one one Christmas uh, just to have dinner with them, you know, lunch with Dad, you know, yeah. before Christmas. And I, it was in the Ivy. I had never been to the Ivy before. And we, we came out of there, and I think there's always Pavarazzi everywhere and about, you know. Pavarazzi? Yeah. Is he a singer? <laughs> 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 you know, uh, they go with the funny people anyway. But they, I think they thought I had two birds with me, and they smudged me up coming out, you know. So, and then they were fine out, it's your daughter, so it was very disappointing. And they but, in. but you know, that's what's lovely, you, the fact that, because obviously, you know, kids growing up, it's a tough thing, yeah. and then especially young girls, they're growing up and dad's got to be strict, but at the same time, you've got to let them go out and be themselves. Yeah. Uh, but, but you're still close with all, I mean, everything's... You're yeah, you have your moments, yeah. you know, you, you do, and they're, they're pretty strong girls, you know. Yeah, strong will. They've got their own minds, you know, and I'm, I'm pleased about it, I'm proud of them for that, you know, and it's great when your kids are not frightened of you. Yeah. It's all, I'm very disappointed about that. It's <laughs> lovely, but but they're, they're not, you know, they're, they've got their own mind. And, you know, I can only tell them so much and they either listen or they don't listen. And I think if you interfere too much, then you're going to lose them, you yeah. know. Yeah, you can't. You've got to pick your battles. Yeah, and you never win them anyway. <laughs> now, you've got two new movies. One's out right now. Yeah. Uh, but it comes 44... out Friday. Yeah, well, Friday today, yeah. yeah. When you were on the show last time, you were talking about a new movie, 44 Inch Chest. Yes. Uh, it's like a who's who of uh, British actors of a certain generation, many of whom you've worked before, of course. John Hurt, John Hurt Shane. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's a new, the younger guy, I'm not so Stephen familiar. Delane, yeah. Do you know, I worked with him on King Arthur. And when I was working with him on 44 Inch Chess, he said, we worked together before. I said, no, we didn't. <laughs> I, I, don't, I didn't, didn't remember. Because he was done up as Merlin, he was done up as the wizard. And he, <laughs> he, he changed his persona in every job he kind of does, you know. And I, it took me about two weeks to realise that I had worked with him before. He's, he's such a chameleon in the way he goes to work. Well, Fine I mean, actor. But it's a, uh, can I just say, uh, the performance from you in this film, I think, is stunning. I mean, it's a, and it's a, it's a very different kind of movie. It's the same sort of people behind some of the, the writers and some of the production people involved with Sexy Beast. Same writers, yeah. Okay, completely, I believe. Yeah. Uh, but one interesting role. Uh, tell us about the part you play, because it's a very... Yeah. It's a different kind of character, isn't it? Yeah, I guess so. It's, it's, it's about a man who overloves. He loves his wife so much. Loves her the bitch, you know, where... Uh, and, and actually drives her away, and in the end she comes to him, and this is the beginning of the film, and tells him that she's met someone else, a French waiter. A French waiter. Oh, I know. <laughs> Not just a waiter, a Frenchman. I know, well, that's... Uh, <laughs> absolutely would destroy any man
<laughs> but, um, and so his mates come around, which is the journal. It kind of, it kind of reminds me of this film. Although it's shot today, it's about now, but it's kind of got that old 50s feel to it, you know, about men that were born probably in the 30s that came through the Second World War and have that kind of mentality of that honour and that kind of eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth kind of feeling about it, you know? But it's really interesting seeing you playing a guy who is, you know, has been... He's obviously a, a, had a tough past and has been in tough situations, and you can see that from his friends, but at the same time is happy to expose that side of himself, can talk about his emotions. There's not many films that are, you know, scripts that you will get where you, you get a chance to play a man who, show, who can show his feelings, and I, that's why I kind of think it's... A woman's film as well to go and watch, you know, for a woman to see how a man actually can love and, and what happens to him when that love's taken away from him, you know. Would you have uh, found it as easy to play this sort of role early on in your career, do you think? I mean, no, I doubt it very much. Well, I, I, I will say, you know, them, them kind of years and working with people like the John Hurts and the Ian McShanes and the Bob Hoskins and the Michael Caines, uh, just to name a few, is something where you learn a, a, along the way, you know, to work with great people like you. I don't think you even realise what you're learning when you work with people like that, you know. Uh, great actors, you know. So by the time you get to an age of 50, 52, uh, maybe you're ready to play them parts. And not only that, the writing is so good, John. Um, and, I, and I don't mean to take anything away from the way you perform or the way anyone else performs, but with writing such as this, that you don't, you ain't really got to do too much, you know. You got to say the lines. But there's some performers. I mean, Ian McShane is just—he just, he just gets better and better and yeah. better, doesn't he? He's very good at being gay as well, which you know, in <laughs> sexy talking about beast on and screen all. Or just no, I'm, I'm yeah. telling you, he's, yeah. he's beginning. You know, I know he's a bit of a chap. He's been a chap <laughs> his time, but he plays Meredith very, very yeah, well, yeah. very convincingly, and it's it's a bit scary. Those, you know? all those, but the, <laughs> but just that kind of the scary characters he plays, they do seem to come very easy to him, and that is a bit. Alive, uh, he's, he's just a very, very, very yeah. brilliant actor, you know, all the way from Deadwood. You've watched him in Deadwood, he's oh, fantastic. Okay. You know? Let, let's have a look. This is uh, Ray and those fellas we mentioned in action in 44 inch chest. Oh, wow. uh, now, you're not just watching those What's this? So, you've just finished uh, another movie with Mel Gibson as well? Yeah, I, I finished it last, just before last Christmas. Right, right. A film called Edge of Darkness, which was a series. It was uh, a years TV ago. series. What a fantastic series. Yeah, same director as well, funny enough, Martin Campbell. Yeah. We've done a lot of the uh, Bond films recently. And, but uh, Gibson hasn't acted for a while, has he? I mean, he's been directing. Years. Eight years. And there's another one. When you sit on a set with Mel Gibson, he, he, what he knows about film, you know, and the way he goes about his business, um, and the way he, he acts in this movie is fantastic. Well, he's, I, getting, he's got better and better and well, better. Well, he's a tremendous director as well, I think. I think yeah. he's a really uh, yeah. solid director. Um, and, and he had that weird phase, obviously. He went through that weird patch, a difficult patch in his life, which he, I think he dealt with admirably. Did mm. you talk about that? Did he, or was it... No, just... it's none of my business. The first time I met the man, yeah, you know. So you just sit down and work. You, you get on a set. <laughs> 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 oh, well, I want to talk... Yeah, the first thing you go up and say, I've heard you had a difficult time. Oh, you go... <laughs> <laughs> you know? But, you know, you, you yeah. must be wondering whether it's going to come up. <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> I would be, I'd be sitting there going, I love you and that, I love you, Mad Max. Yeah. What, what were you thinking when you went and called that cop sugar tits? I mean, yeah. that's what I would be... It would be in the back well, of my mind. I've called old Bill a lot worse than that every time, so... <laughs> I'm, I'm, no, I yeah. didn't mean judge him, I just wonder whether that ever came no, up. I, right? No, of course not. You know, I've, I've just met the man and you want to get on, you don't want to start yeah. off on a bad foot, do you? you know? <laughs> and actually, to just really, once you did... Cos I got into the film very late, I come along... Probably, you know, they were already filming when well, I got Well, they had the someone else in the role who yeah, then Yeah, someone else was working on the part and it didn't work out and they left and I came on board. So I didn't have all that time to think about the part and get on with it, so I was straight in at the deep end. But, Ray, how exciting. I'm not taking anything away from you, but how exciting yeah. to get the call from all these people you get now. I mean, you've worked with just about everyone yeah. else. To know I mean, Gibson it's, it's wants to work with you. It, it must, sometimes you must feel like pinching yourself, don't you? Well, it's almost like you're dreaming and you're going to wake up and it's, it's you know, you're, you're back as a seven-year-old in Plasto. Yeah. You've got to go through it all again. <laughs> but I wouldn't change anything. The only thing I'd change is I wish my mum was still around to see it all, you know. Um, and that would be the one thing I would change, to see my kids growing up and all that. That's the only thing I'd probably really change in my life, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, here's something you might not know about Ray, and I was uh, very impressed to find this out. You, you, last year, towards the end of last year, you went out to visit the troops in Afghanistan. Yeah, I did, yeah, yeah. No, no, yeah. so what, they came and asked you, or this was something no, I was No, I'd I, I done it all wrong, really, because, really, you know, I, I was asked to go by a newspaper a long while ago, and I didn't want to go with a newspaper. I, I didn't want to do it that way, you know? And, and I didn't Why not? Because it. it might look wrong. Yeah, I, did, I didn't want to go out there for that reason. I kind of thought it was a publicity angle and all that, yeah. which is, at the end of the day, that doesn't matter, because you're going out there to see the troops that are out there, so you forget about all that. But, and I, I was invited up to a lemon, to a little 34th, the ref up there, you know, a uh, little squadron. And these guys, would go, before they went out there, and I went up and had dinner with them and met the squadron leader, Sean Rawls, who's a good guy, a good guys, you know. And uh, got drunk with them 
as you do. And they said, would you like to come out to see us? I went, yeah, of course I will. <laughs> and then woke up the next day like that. <laughs> you know, you're going to Camp Bastion, you know, and I never still thought it might not happen, you know, and, and it did. And, you know, it was too late to pull out. You ain't going to pull out there, you know. And I kind of thought, I know a lot of these guys that go, and, you know, how do you, you know, when you say, I oh, know how you feel, you don't know how they feel. You don't know when you look into their eyes and what can you say? So I went. You know, these boys are out there protecting my kids and you see young boys get off a plane and within a day they're men. Yeah. You know, they're running a city and they're building a city for Afghanistan, not for us. Yeah. You know, and it is a different war. And uh, yeah, This is another thing I learned, you know, where Iraq, people don't want to be in Iraq. It's, you know, it's a different war and it's a war that should, probably should never have happened. But out there, there is a reason to be there. They're not actually fighting the Afghanistanis, they're fighting everyone else that comes from everywhere. Yeah, else, yeah. You know? they're actually trying to help and them. it's about the poppy fields and all that kind of stuff that's going on. A lot of people visit and they, they stay near the camp, but you actually went out with them yeah. on a couple of manoeuvres, didn't you? Yeah. I was well looked after, don't get me wrong, you know, and, and I, I was shitting myself, don't, don't ever think <laughs> I was, you know. But you kind of find yourself in that position, and them kids are going out there every day, and they, that's what they do. And uh, they said, you want to go? And I went, yeah. Uh, you kind of say it, you know, and go, you go... But, you, yeah, I went, I went out there, and I, as I said, I was well looked after. I was in one of their vehicles, and, you know, which they should have more of. I mean, 80% of the troops that get killed out there are, are by mines and by bombs, you know, and if they had more of these vehicles, because that would stop 80% of our boys getting killed. Yeah. And, you know, we, we faff around. Our government faffs about saying we're going to give them more helicopters in 10 years' time. Well, yeah. what about now? And we're going to give them this and give them that. Well, why, don't, why haven't... They ask them to fight a war. Why don't they give them the equipment to fight it with? Well, that's the thing. That's what you know? And you've been out there and you've seen what a difference it would make. Yeah. So you've got first-hand experience of that. Yeah, to a certain degree. I mean, you know, I wasn't front line firing guns and being fired at, you mm. know, as such. But, but you know, you, this is some mother's son out there. Yeah, the kids, some of them. Yeah, they're babies. They've got young babies at home, and this is what they do, and this is what they believe in, you know. And if you ask me about wars, I don't want to see anyone fight a war yeah. before. But there's something about the place. Well, they're out there. Here's the thing: the argument isn't, you know, oh, you shouldn't be out there. They're yeah. out there. They're, and they're out there. They're for us. And Listen, so. it's like your sister having a row in a bar, and your sister could be wrong. Right, but you're not going to take sides with no one else, you know. I'm We're sure, British I'm sure and that's the, it, you know. I'm sure the troops you visited are delighted to be compared to your sister their way. <laughs> <laughs> they couldn't fight like my sister. Um, but what, <laughs> <laughs> what, what an incredible experience for you as well, though, to come. It was. Well. It, it really it, it changed my life a lot about how I think and about how I perceive things and wars and, and different, you know, and soldiers. I, I've never been a soldier when I was a kid. What do I want to be a soldier for? Yeah, yeah. But I've been, I'm lucky. But you've always been very pro-UK. You've always been... Would you... If someone said to you, OK, uh, and obviously, you know, it's uh, an interesting time politically in this country, would you ever throw your, your hand into politics? Would you ever want to... No, I'm, on not, local I'm not clever enough, really, to, um, to know the ins and outs of that. But all, all I really want is a politician to get up and tell me the truth. You know, I haven't heard one of them do that. Ray Winston for Prime Minister. Similar oh, to are you, uh, are you internet savvy? Are you someone who... Do you ever... My eight-year-old taught me how to do it. <laughs> so when I'm away, I can Skype her and all that kind of stuff. Oh, that's stuff, a lovely you know? thing. So yeah, it's brilliant, you know. But are you aware that there are some uh, websites... Obviously, there's a lot about you on the internet, but are you aware that there's various... Uh, you know this... Uh, do you know about Facebook, one of the social... Yeah, network? I won't use it. Facebook. OK, really. well, there's, uh, there are various sites uh, devoted to you. A suggestion for it. I don't know. Yeah, here's, yeah. here's one. This one is already oh, up there. God. Ray Winston for Prime Minister. This one already uh, exists. Look at that. Uh, <laughs> and it says, I love that. It says, put the great back into Great Britain. Who's going to mess with Ray at the helm? The French? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I won't be doing a French film for a no, while. No, you won't be doing that for a while. <laughs> this is my favourite one, Ray. You, and you don't know about it, This is actually up there. Huh? Don't be afraid of Ray Winston's penis. Oh, dear. <laughs> Okay, and this, I believe, <laughs> was set up by someone who's, who's seen you naked in the movie and, and he's scared of you for something. Yes, reason. but no, it was very cold. <laughs> <laughs> and it weird, though, some of the weird things that people write about. What is the matter with these people? <laughs> you know what, though? If they didn't love you, they wouldn't set those sites up. Oh, it's very nice. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But you are, you are beloved, aren't you? I mean, you might, do you get that feeling? Not all the time. I don't think so all the time. I, you know, people only see you when you're on a chat show or on a film, really, yeah. you know? They don't know you every day of your life when you're about and all that. But you, you know? kind of wander around. You, you're not I'm a grumpy old away. man. I've got to tell you, you know, <laughs> I've seen you on a pro of grumpy old men and, <laughs> and, you know, speaking about it. But, you know, and I watch it and I go, grumpy old men, look, listen to them. And I go, 
That's me. <laughs> I'm moan about everything. Well, I can imagine you and John Hurt and Ian McShane sitting around. Oh. I bet you put, really put you them on. You want moaning? Well. Listen to Johnny Hurt. <laughs> that loves a moan, you know? And it was, it was great fun sitting around with that little mob, not even talking about acting or films or anything, just talking and conversing <laughs> and telling stories, you know? Yeah, I've got some yeah. great ones from McShane, yeah. Yeah, but you know, I mean, and those guys, they've, they've been there, they've done it, they've seen it all. Done it they? and been there, yeah. And, they're, and, you know, at the top of their tree, okay. what they do. Ray, you know, uh, I love having you on the show and uh, I thank you for coming I've always back enjoyed it, John. Uh, my my flies were undone last time. I remember my trousers were broken. <laughs> <laughs> and you noticed. Well, that's why I set that website up. Don't be afraid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. Ray Winston, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Right, exactly. Are you going to stay for the music? Yeah. yeah. Stay for the music. Ray Winston. Thank you.